Right guys, um, had a couple of emails from guys asking what can we be doing on our time off um, that's gonna prevent skill fade, you know, they're worried about losing the skills that they've attained, um, get our skills up, um, etc. Um, and apart from doing jobs in your own home, such as, you know, splash backs, that hallway you were always gonna do, now you've got time to do it. <laughs> Other than that, what you could do is, you set yourself up a little cutting board. Who remembers these? Yeah? Week one, day one. But essential for bringing your skills along, yeah? Get one of these knocked up, it'll take you an hour to knock one of these up in the shed, wouldn't it? Triangular cuts, circular cuts. If you're smashing these, no bother. Try one diamond set. So you could do that. So today, guys, we're gonna do Mosaics. So guys, um, I've been wanting to do this video for a, a wee while um, and now obviously we've got the time to do it. Um, back in the day we used to run uh, mosaic classes for veterans with PTSD um, with a guy called Jonathan Hunter who is a very good mosaic artist based in Edinburgh. Hi Jonathan, if you're watching. Um, and these courses were amazing, you know, um, very relaxing doing mosaics it's like a form of meditation which you guys are going to find out um, and it will also bring out your creative side as well mosaics little pieces of tile marble glass stone broken down into little pieces called terrazzi that you make up to build up a picture, whether it be um, the human form, a nice flower, a detail of an eye, your business logo, um, or today we are going to do a fish. Mosaics have been used for thousands of years. Um, traditionally, the tools required to do this is what is known as a hammer and hardy. A hammer and a hardy, which is a block of wood with a steel blade embedded into it. And what you do is, um, using the hammer against the blade, in between being the tile, the correct technique, you can create um, any cut required. Hope you guys um, enjoy this today. Um, I hope you do have a go at this and participate. One of the things that you can actually do, um, if you can't think of a mosaic to do, is your business logo. Um, it looks really impressive if you actually tile your business logo. Um, but what we can use um, is our nippers, okay? So we're just gonna use our nippers because we're not using marble or anything. We're just gonna be using off cuts of tiles. Um, now quickly just talk about the materials. You can use anything to make a mosaic. You can use pebbles off the beach. Um, you can smash up crockery and use that um, or if you've got tiles laying around from a job um, then they're ideal as well so you get a good um, range of colours okay so looking at the tools then so we've got our nippers um, and you can see there I've got my nippers and my mosaic nippers um, you can use a compass I'll show you that in a little bit a tape measure um, just like a little stick, even a cocktail stick or something would work, wouldn't it? And um, just to maneuver um, the mosaics around because they are quite uh, fiddly to work with. And um, we've got a Stanley knife, and we've got you'd have a pencil, and we've also got china markers for marking. Okay, and um, so pretty easy to get set up. Um, it is handy to have a wet cutter. Now I know some of you guys um, who are not tilers 
if you're looking at this video, you might not have a wet cutter, but this is how you're gonna create a lot of um, sh like awkward shapes and more sliver cuts as well. Okay, so there's the, the, the toolkit required. Um, it's not a lot, is it really? Um, easily attainable for a few quid. So fixing technique guys, um, today we're going to be using what's called the direct fixing method, okay? And that is simply placing the tiles directly onto our design. So if we look at this eye design that's been done, you can see the, um, the detail of the actual eye that's been drawn onto the board. And then once we've achieved the cuts, we simply glue them directly onto that board. The other uh, fixing method that you can use is called the indirect method and this is where your tiles will be put onto a temporary um, sheet and material whether it be a mesh sheet or um, a cloth usually with like a water soluble glue and then it will be transferred onto site and adhered to the wall with a suitable um, notch trowel and adhesive. One of the, uh, the old traditional methods for doing these um, decorative mosaics is going onto a bed of slaked lime, um, which is probably about 10 millimeters thick. Um, now slaked lime does not set, or it takes months and months to set. Um, it's a bit like our training adhesives, I suppose. Um, and what you do is you place the uh, tiles into the bed of lime once you've built up that picture, you then glue um, a sheet of cloth over the picture um, with a water soluble glue. I believe they used to use rabbit hair glue, rabbit hide glue, sorry, uh, back in the day. But as long as it's water soluble, um, let it dry overnight. Very carefully remove the mosaic from the slaked lime backen, lay it face down and then what you would do is you would clean it up with little picks very carefully with brushes etc. Once that's done you would uh, lay um, a layer of cement on the back so like an adhesive would work for this, a cementitious adhesive. Uh, keep it nice and flat, let it dry overnight um, and then the, the mosaic piece will be ready to be lifted up and transported to um, wherever it is to be fixed into position. Look, back in the classroom. Okie doggy. Uh, that'll do. Okay. Ah. So guys, uh, what backgrounds can we tile onto? Well, if you're doing it for strictly decorative purposes, like, like a little picture, like what we're going to be doing today, then really a bit of ply boards, a bit of MDF, um, we're actually using plasterboard because we've got loads of offcuts from the plaster on course. Um, anything like that is absolutely fine. Um, you guys might have offcuts of backerboard in the back of the van, no doubt. Insulated backerboard is really good because it's nice and light uh, and easy to work with as well. Um, so anything really. And if you're going into an, uh, an environment um, that was like you know subject to temperature variations or movements. Um, or if it was going to be um, in a wet area, let's say in a bathroom, then you need to make sure that you're using the correct um, materials and going on to the correct backgrounds also. In a, in a bathroom area, say somebody wanted a mosaic put on the wall, um, I mean we know when, when we fix uh, mosaics these days, they're already pre um, done onto 300 bathroom with mesh sheets, aren't they? And all we'll do is we'll just put them onto the background with a three or four millimeter notched trowel. Um, but you need to make sure that the background is uh, the correct background. So once again, no plasterboard, um, no timber. Um, you know, you've got to make sure the background is nice, sound, solid, um, clean, dry, all the rest of it, and flat. Um, and that's a very important one when you do a mosaic, guys. The backgrounds have to be perfectly flat, nice and smooth, no bumps, because they're going to make you um, your little pieces jump out and stagger out as well. Um, so in a bathroom area, you'll be going ideally onto um, a backer board um, with a suitable adhesive, say Max Flex Fiber, 
um, which used to be called Mosaic Fix or Bal One. Um, and these two adhesives are what we call high grab adhesives. So when you put the mosaics on the wall, they won't slip down. So I have um, drew the fish, quite happy with it. Notice that the actual picture is um, it's quite, it's a decent size, isn't it? What you don't want to do is you don't want to create something that is too small and too detailed because you won't be able to um, achieve all the cuts and you'll make it too difficult, okay? So as you can see, this bit here is gonna be a wee triangular piece of tile. That's gonna be a full piece of tile and I think I'll split this one in two. So that's gonna be two pieces of um, tile there. So you get what I'm doing. Um, and then you can just start working on, you know, the detail of where the tiles are gonna go. So you wanna, you wanna mark where every single tile is gonna go. If we do the eyeball like that. Maybe split that one there. Maybe split that one there. Okay. Bins, I think we'll just keep them the sizes of the tiles. Um, and then you just want to sort of separate it up into different parts so that would be like a triangular piece there Try and think about how the lines flow as well. Like try and create some illusion of shape. Um, so you want your lines to be nice and flowy. You don't want them to be, um, you know, just straight lines.
create a bit of glitter in this piece. I want it to. I'm going to use a bit of glass all the way from the tip of the tail down to the tip of the nose. So this is going to be quite a time consuming part of this mosaic is getting this little bit done but it will give it a nice effect transfer the picture onto our background and uh, that we want to put the mosaic on okay now you could free hand the um, you could you could have done the drawing directly on the board couldn't you if you want um, but sometimes it's better to work on it on a bit of paper to come up with the design and then transfer it um, now, it would have been good to get some tracing paper, but obviously all the shops are shut. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go on with quite a dark lead 6B over all my lines, and then I'm going to transfer it onto um, the 12 mil plaster board, which I'm going on in this case, um, and then that will, once we um, rub on the back, it will transfer it through and then we can go on to the next stage. So let's do that then. I'm going to try and centre it on the board as best as possible so I can see. I just need to make a little adjustment because I'm going to put a frame around the board as well. And I want the, the fish to be lowered down as far as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to... Pin it down. stop it moving as much as possible.
guys, so now what we need to do is we need to think about um, how we're going to colour it in. Now what you can do is, you've got a bit of time on your hands, is use your sketch, both sides, to figure out your colours. You know, if you've got a pencil set, um, I would imagine we're going to go for some greens. Um, maybe a dark green and a light green, maybe some white. I'm going to say we're going to use a bit of glass on the back here. Maybe to bring out a bit of colour, we might make the fins a bit brighter. Uh, but that's all to be decided, so that's the next part. So some of the colours we're going to use for this project, guys, we've got a dark green, light green, maybe a tile, grey, blue, red. Nice selection of tiles, make it nice and vibrant. Alright guys, so there's going to be times where you want to scale a drawing up, okay? You want to make it bigger. Um, than what it actually is on the diagram you have or, or the reference that you have uh, and as you can see in this instance we've taken um, this um, picture of a fist and we've done a grid around it and you can see um, the grids are one centimeter squares okay um, and what we've done is we've times this we've made this ten times bigger so the squares on the wall um, if these are one centimetre and we want to t scale it up ten times, these are ten centimetre squares now. Okay, uh, and what we've been able to do, once we've got this grid system on the wall, we've been able to map the picture by using the grid system. So that knuckle is in grid five and seven, and if you look on here, five and seven. Okay, so it's a nice, um, accurate way to upscale pictures or downscale pictures, you can use it the opposite way as well. And as you can see here, it's done it really well. Um, takes a bit of time, took maybe a couple of hours to do this one. Um, but once once it's complete, it is very accurate, okay? And here we can see guys where we transferred the image onto the wall and we started tiling it. And you can see on this mosaic, we've cut the tiles down into strips, like we just showed on the demonstration. And then we've cut thousands of little cubes. And then Using a trammel also to give yourself guidelines. So it keeps it nice and neat. And you can see on the side we've done just strips of tiles, which I think works quite well. There's no rules, you can do whatever you want. And what we want to think about now is, is the colour scheme. Okay, you want to decide um, what colours you're going to use, etc. Where you're going to place, uh, what coloured tiles you're going to use where. All right. Two ways you can do this. Um, the easiest way, I suppose, is to just colour the thing in, get your cranes out and, and play around with it. Do some photocopies so you've got, you know, a few different goes of this. Um, and once you've decided the colour scheme, you, if you've actually coloured it in, then you've got a, um, you've got something to look at anyway. Um, the way I do it is I'll actually just mark numbers on. So if this section's gonna be white, I've just marked that number one. And you can see the top, top right hand corner, I've got white, number one. So when I come to do my actual uh, proper piece, I know that white tiles are going in these boxes because of the numbered, okay? Uh, if that one's gonna be green, I'll mark the number that the green tile is in there, okay? Um, so that's what we're gonna do next, guys. Go to that stage, um, and then we'll look at some um, cutting techniques and start gluing some tiles into position. Right, guys, um, a couple of little things you can practice then to get your skills up. Um, the first one we'll look at is creating a circle, okay? So what you want for this one is you want a square piece of tile. So let's see if we can get one of those. Okay, 
So I have my square piece of tile and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to nip off the four corners. One, two, three, four. And we're close to a circle. Now what we can do is we can tidy it up a bit. Go again. And there we have it. And there's a circle. Another one that you want to practice is getting little pieces of tiles. So if I take a square, like so, what I can do is I can I can half it and then I can quarter it. Okay. You can see now we've got these little pieces that we could fix into position. And you can get them even smaller than that. So you can get, get some really um, small detailed pieces, you know, if you were to like make the eye, that, that's going to require some small pieces, isn't it? Another thing that you want to learn to do is connect up triangles. So I'm going to get a few triangles on the Goya. can see that I was starting to make a little circle kind of And it's just a matter of getting used to using your nippers um, and creating um, the shapes needed. Think of doing a mosaic, like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but you're allowed to cut the jigsaw pieces down to fit. You could also use mosaic nippers, and these are really handy for cutting lots of little squares.
once you have the squares, you can put them into position. All right guys, so let's go ahead and look at some ways that we can create some um, cuts with our nippers. Um, so we've got a standard set of nippers and we have a mosaic set of nippers, okay? First things first, make sure you put your safety glasses on. As I say, you can get little fragments jumping up uh, and if one gets in the old eyeball, it's not nice. Okay, so first thing we're gonna look at then is you wanna break them down um, so that they're actually quite easy to work with. So you've got a little hammer, get little sections off them, okay? Now you can see where, in fact, I'm gonna use this little point here. You can see all the six sections are color coordinated, can't you? Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. So that's light green and dark green. So what I can do is I can take one of the light greens, um, which are number threes, and if you look at that one, I can just draw through. And then I can nip that away. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's all in the charm, isn't it? So there's an example how we just got that one there. And you can see some that I've just done a wee while ago.
tip for you here. So I want to create this triangular cut here. Now trying to do that just off the bat is very difficult, but if you can see, I've actually created a line down one side of the triangle and continued it through. Can you see this line here? So using a ruler or a bit of tile, and I've also done it along the bottom, so the bottom of the triangle I've continued the line across as well. So I've got this line here and this line here. Then what I can do is I can place my tile into position. And you can see that I've created the cuts by following the lines. One thing um, I just need to show you guys is how to glue them in position. Simply get one of the tiles, get a little bit of PVA glue, stick it on. It's as simple as that. And I tend to do maybe 10 to 15 pieces and then glue them in and then carry on. So here I am just demonstrating how to cut um, strips of tiles, set your guide bar up and cut lots of strips ready for making into cubes. Marking the cubes to be cut. Always make yourself a uh, a guide that you never rub out so you get the same size cubes every time. There we go. Ready to work on. So you can spend like 20 minutes doing this and have like a few hundred of these squares and then go ahead and build your picture up. I know we're not quite there yet, but I just want to show you how we can get ready for doing um, the background, which is going to be the water. Can you see how I've given a little wavy line here? What I'm going to do is using some of these black tiles, we will be using blue when we get to this stage, but just to show you, I can put my pieces in on that line. And because they are quite small, they will contour around the curve of the, the line, giving the effect of wavy water and then when you come to do the ones underneath it'll just follow on so 
Sometimes you might need to use a little cocktail stick or something just to put the tiles into position. tidy your pieces up on a wet cutter so if you see that's quite rough isn't it
see how that's moved that right out. So yeah, so I look forward to seeing some work, guys. I hope some of you do this, and um, so we've got some work to see um, over the next couple of weeks. So there we have it, guys. Mosaics. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, if you did, please give us a thumbs up, ring the bell uh, so you can be notified of further videos, and leave any comments in the comment section below.